been far from the peace for sure. Very deeply stained with sin, sinking to rise the more. But the master of the sea heard my despairing cry. From the waters lifted me now save am I well love lifted me love lifted me whoa and nothing else could have love lifted Let's 
in the Lord. Holy trust in me. How great is our God. How great is our God. How great is his name. How great is his name. He's the greatest one. Greatest one. Forever the same. He rose. He rose by the water. Let's worship. Of the mighty red sea. He said he lead. He said I'll lead you. One more time. Holy trust in me. How great is our God. How great is our God. How great is his name. Hallelujah. He's, He's the greatest one. one. Forever the same. Yeah, yeah. He rode back the water from the mighty red sea. He said, he said I'll lead you. Holy trust in me. How great is our God, how great is his name, he's the greatest one, forever the same, he rolled back the water from the mighty red sea, he said I'll lead you, would you trust in me? Wonderful thing, a very wonderful thing to be free from sin and of Christ within to be made a joint heir with Jesus my Lord. What a wonderful, wonderful thing. Oh, what a wonderful, oh, what a wonderful yes, Lord. thing. Jesus, my Lord, what a wonderful, wonderful thing. Oh, what a wonderful thing, a very wonderful thing. To be free. To be free from sin and of Christ within. To be made a joint heir with Jesus, my Lord. What a wonderful, wonderful thing. Oh, free, free. Free, free, free. I have been set free. I have met a man, the man from Galilee. He took away my Lord, my heavy load of sin. And no one singing glory. Hallelujah. Free, free, free. Hallelujah. I have been set free. Thank you, Jesus. I have met the man, the man from Galilee. He took away my Lord. Heavy, heavy Lord of sin. No I'm singing glory. Hallelujah. Give me that whole time religion. Give me that whole time religion. It's good enough for me. Give me that whole time religion. Give me that whole time religion. Give me that whole time religion. It's good enough for me. Give me that whole time religion. Whole time religion. Whole time religion is good enough for me. It was good for our fathers. It was good for our fathers. It was good for our fathers. It's good enough for me. Give me that whole time religion. Give me that whole time religion. Give me that whole time religion. It's good it's enough, enough for, for me. Give me that whole time religion. Give me that whole time religion. Give me that whole time religion. It's good enough for me.
yes, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, Hallelujah. give them to the Lord, for he is good. His mercy. His mercy. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord. Hallelujah. Give thanks unto the Lord. Hallelujah. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him. Bless his name. Bless his name. The Lord is Lord. It's good. Hallelujah. 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 Let's worship the Lord. Bless the Lord. Let's worship Hallelujah. the Lord. Let's give thanks unto the King of Kings. Hallelujah. 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 He is worthy. Worthy to be praised. Thank you, Jesus. We He's praise. worthy Anybody to be praised. Does want to worship the Lord. Hallelujah. Can somebody worship the Lord and give thanks unto the King of Kings? Hallelujah. Enter Hallelujah. into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto bless his name. And bless his name. Bless his name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We're going to open, continue our morning service, singing hymn 29 from the Pentecostal hymnals. Send the light. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Restless with send the light, send the light. There are souls to rescue, there are souls to save, send the light, send the light, send the light, send the light, the blessed gospel light, let it shine from shore to shore.
worship the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Send the light. Send the light. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And this morning, we are going to be praying. And we have quite a number of requests here this morning. And I'm going to ask all of us to help to pray for those persons who have sent in requests this morning. And I'm sure there are those among us that have needs that also need to hear from God today regarding those needs. If it's not too much, we want to pray together. I'm going to ask us all to come to the altar this morning. Everybody in the building. I'm going to ask you all to come out of your seat, walk to the altar, and whatever your needs are. And if you know somebody that has a need, then the altar is the place. We're going to leave those needs here and ask the Lord. We're all going to be in the altar this morning, talking to the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Yes, let's get into the altar. We're going to lay everything before the Lord this morning, whether it belongs to us or it belongs to somebody else. Glory to God. We have Shamar, Cassandra, or Casanova. Uh, he is fell ill from, fell from a tree. He's ill. Affect his neck and back. He's presently in the hospital to undergo surgery. We know a God that heals bones the fastest. Hallelujah. So any broken bone is nothing for the Lord to heal. Then we have Dennis Berry, and he's also in the hospital, having problems with kidney. Well, we were all created by him. He knows every organ inside of us, know how it should function. Hallelujah. And so there is, it's not hard for the Lord to heal the kidney this morning. Glory to God. And then we have Dawn Reynolds. She was in the hospital. She's still ill and is at home, and she needs prayer. Is there anything too hard for God? Hallelujah. Then we have Sharon Shim, and she needs a job. God can do everything. He can provide jobs. He can heal. He can deliver. He can comfort, he can direct, he can instruct, he can counsel. Is there anything that God cannot do? Hallelujah. Then we have Sister Beverly, who is also ill, and God can heal everybody all at once. <laughs> That's the power of my God. Glory be to God. Then we have Leroy Allen. He also needs a job. So he can pay his bill, and I will add to that, pay his side. Glory to God. So we are going to pray that those that need jobs will get jobs so they can give it to the house of God and give to others. Those that are ill this morning, nobody is going to walk away from this altar the same way you came. Hallelujah. If you need spiritual healing, hallelujah, the God that heals Jehovah God is here this morning. If you need emotional healing, God is here to heal your emotions this morning. What is it that is ailing you this morning? God is here. You need deliverance. You're fearful. You're burdened. What is your need this morning? Dr. Jesus is in the house. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Say, so Dr. Jesus is in the house. He's taking over the world this morning. He's running world this morning. So whatever your needs are, just lay it before him. We're going to lift our hands and we're going to begin to worship him. He said, if I be lifted up, hallelujah, I will draw. Let's worship him and then present our need after we have worshipped. Hallelujah. Abba Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name this morning. We lift you up. Hallelujah. We exalt you. We adore you. We extol you, Lord. You are great and greatly to be praised. There is none like unto you in all of the heavens and in all of the earth. There is no God like you. You are God on the mountain. You are God in the valley. You are God everywhere. 
You are God in the morning. You are God in the evening. You are God when we are healed. And you are God when we are well. Because we know, God, that you are able to make dry bones put on flesh. Whatever the situation is, God, there is nothing too hard for you. God Almighty, if it's demon healing us, healing us, God, you are the head of all principalities and power. And no demon spirit, hallelujah, can affect your children. God Almighty, this morning, we place before you all those that are healed this morning. We place Sister Valerie Stewart before you and all those whose request, Leroy, Reynolds, whoever they are this morning, Miss Shim, hallelujah, Mr. Berry, hallelujah, God Almighty, we lay the needs of Brother Holland before you this morning and all those who stand in the altar this morning with different type of need, there is nothing too hard for you. God Almighty, stretch forth as you always do your hand upon the healing bodies this morning and we declare that kidneys will be healed in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Broken bones heal in the name of Jesus Christ. Arthritis heal in the name of Jesus Christ. Cancer in the name of Jesus. God Almighty, you have paid the price. You said by your stripes, we are healed. And everyone this morning that has a need, we declare in the name of Jesus that those needs have been met. Spiritual strength this morning. New portion of anointing upon your people in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Let the fire fall this morning. Burn out every sin that might be in every heart. Hallelujah. And lift up the spirits of those that are hung down this morning. God Almighty, let your healing virtue flow through heavy bones this morning. Hallelujah. Let your comforting arms comfort those that need counsel and comfort this morning. Have your way in the house this morning. This is your house, God Almighty. And we worship and lift up your name. And we say thank you, Lord, for hearing our prayers this morning. Hallelujah. We declare warfare upon sickness. We declare warfare upon sickness this morning. Hallelujah. We take authority over sickness this morning, whether physical or spiritual this morning. And we declare healing in the name of Jesus. Lord, take over this service. The singers, the worshipers, one who will preach, the musician. Hallelujah. And those that are in hearing. Hallelujah. Wherever they are this morning. That the sound that moves out of this assembly will reach the hearts of men walking on the road this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let the glory of God descend in this house. Hallelujah. We ask that your Shekinah will dwell with us today. Hallelujah. Anoint everyone in this house this morning. From the crown of their head to the sole of their feet. Let no one walk out of your Lord the same way they came. Thank you, Lord, for hearing our prayers this morning. Thank you, Lord, for bringing deliverance. Thank you for healing this morning. Thank you for continuing the healing upon our sister, Sister Valerie Stewart. Hallelujah. And Pastor Stewart this morning. We thank you, Lord, for what you have already done in their bodies. And we thank you for what you are even doing now as we declare healing. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Remember God Almighty, Sister Rushton this morning. And we ask that you continue to strengthen and heal her body. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. We pray for Pastor Kelly this morning. And we ask God that you will continue to strengthen his body. Continue the healing process that has started in his body. We give you praise and glory and honor. Hallelujah. We pray for Pastor Smith's family. And those that feel the breathe this morning and burden, that you will strengthen them. Hallelujah. For you're a God that gives strength. Glory be to God. Lord God Almighty, 
Thank you, Lord, for charging this atmosphere with your Shekinah. So now force that is on your position to the move of the Holy Ghost can reside in this place today. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus Christ. We thank you for hearing us, Lord. We lift up our hands in thanksgiving and praise to your hallowed holy name. In Jesus' name. And everybody say in Jesus' name. One more time in Jesus' name. Let's lift our hands and give a clap of praise unto our King, the Most High God. Hallelujah. 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 Mighty God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. As you move back to your seat, just continue with the worship and lifting up of hands unto the Lord in praise. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Have faith in God for the answer. Have faith in God. Have faith in God. Have faith, Have faith in God. Have faith for the answer. Have faith in God. Have faith in God. Have faith in God. Have faith in God for the answer. Have faith. Our hands everybody our faith is in Jesus Christ and him alone omnipotent God who is able to do all things omniscient a God who knows all things omnipresent a God who is not only present everywhere but he spans all human experiences past present and future so there's nothing you can go through that our God is not there and he will be there. What a confidence we have in God. Praise God. Praise God. If you would be so kind enough to stand and turn your Bibles with me to Matthew chapter 20. And we'll read from verse 1 through to 16 alternately. So Matthew chapter 20 hallelujah so we'll read alternately and it reads like this for the kingdom of heaven is like unto a man that is a householder which went out early in the morning to hire laborers into his vineyard And he went out about the third hour and saw others standing idle in the marketplace. Again, he went out about the sixth and ninth hour and did likewise. They say unto him, Because no man hath hired us, he saith unto them, Go ye also into the vineyard, and whatsoever is right, 
that shall he receive. And when they came that were hired about the eleventh hour, they received every man a penny. And when they had received it, they murmured against the good man of the house. But he answered one of them and said, Friend, I do thee no wrong. Didst not thou agree with me for a penny? Is it not lawful for me to do what I will with mine own? Is thine eye evil because I'm good? 16 and last, hold on, 16 and last. So shall be first, and the first last, and many be called, but few be chosen. May God add his richest blessing to his words. And before you take your seat, just walk around and greet six or seven persons. It's happy to see you, that you're still in the land of the living, smiling faces, Regardless of your circumstances, your situation, just happy to be alive. Bless the name of the Lord. Bless the name of the Lord. Bless the name of the Lord. Oh, so glad to see you. So glad to see you. <laughs> so good to see everyone. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. So good to see you. My, 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 my. Bless the Lord. Praise God. Anybody happy to be in the house of the Lord? Aren't you glad you're in a country where we're free to just worship God without any restraint? My, my, my. Not in a country where we have to be hiding or in a country where they are dropping bombs. Wow, wow, wow. Praise God. At this time, Sister Claudia Grant will be coming to do the announcements and the welcome. Bless God. Praise the Lord, everyone. Praise the Lord again, everyone. Hallelujah. It is such a pleasure to be in the house of the Lord. And it's my particular delight to welcome you all to the service this morning. God is really in this place. We want to glorify him and thank him for his faithfulness towards us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We also would like to welcome those who are viewing us on live stream this morning. We really appreciate your joining us to worship the Lord and just to know that the Lord is with you wherever you are and he's able to meet you where your needs are. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. I am told that we have with us in the house today, Sister Bernice Byfield from New York. Can you stand and give a praise? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We also have with us Sister Rene. Sister Rene, where are you? Give a show. Give a show. Bless the Lord. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. All right, let us listen to the schedule of announcements for Sunday, February 4 to Sunday, February 11. Today, right now, we are having our missions service and children's church. This evening at 6 p.m., we'll have our pre-service prayer and a special evening service. So let us all come out tonight to this special service. Amen? Amen. On Monday, our prayer and fasting for our annual conference begins and continues through to Saturday, February 10. The main focus is that we will be united for the cause of Christ. 
Amen? Amen. The word of God says when we are united, there is nothing that we imagine that we cannot achieve. So we want the Lord to work on us that we will be at that place where unity will be in the house of God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. On Tuesday, we'll have at 12 noon to 2 p.m. our Golden Ages prayer time. On Wednesday, at 6.30 a.m., we start with Morning Manor Devotion. The theme for February, The Way. The aim is to look at the peculiarities of the way on which we travel. And this, um, saints of God, is no easy journey. The Bible tells us we must walk the straight and the narrow. And it is no easy journey. But we have a God. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. At 11.45, we have our prayer service. That's our usual um, fasting and prayer service. And at 6 p.m., we come back again for a wonderful prayer and Bible study. The concurrent sessions we started two or three weeks ago. We have a note here that the previously scheduled annual saints meeting has been postponed. The new date will be announced. So remember, we, had, we were supposed to have a saints meeting, but that has been postponed. All right, we'll have nothing here on Thursday, Friday, or Saturday. But come Sunday, February 11, we get right back on track again at 6 a.m. with Rightly Dividing the Word on RGR Fame FM. At 7.30, we have prayer time in the sanctuary, 8 o'clock, pre-session. And at 10 a.m., oh, I miss out Sunday school. How can we forget Sunday school? 8.30 a.m., we have Sunday school. Praise God. And then at 10 a.m., we have the morning worship service and children's church. 6 p.m., we are back here again in the evening for pre prayer service and evening service. General announcements. Our prayer and fasting chain continues. The main focus of our prayer and fasting chain for the month of February is, again, and we can almost guess what it is, unity, so that we will be on one accord. Praise God. Regional and national events. Monday to Thursday, February 12 to 15, We'll have our 72nd annual conference at our multipurpose center in Monique. Members who need transportation to the conference should add their names to the list on the table in the foyer. So if you need to, for transportation to go to the conference, you can add your name so we will know how many persons and how many buses we will need. National choir practices. Sunday, February 3, that today, and February 10, oh, February 3 is actually Saturday. Oh, it was yesterday. Okay, so Saturday, February 3, and February 10 at the Bethel Tabernacle in Ocho Rios. Funeral announcements. The funeral service for the late mother of Sister Marcia Brown will be held today at the Seventh-day Adventist Church in Oak Bay. Please pray for those who will be traveling to the service and pray for the family. The funeral service for the late Pastor Lenroy Smith will be held on Saturday, February 24, at the Grace Chapel UPC, St. Thomas, at 10 a.m. That's the end of the announcement. Praise the Lord. Well, praise the Lord, everybody. Just to add to the welcome. I'd like to special welcome Sister Yannick Brent Harris and also Sister Valerie Davis from Evangelical Tabernacle Mogwa. Could you please stand? Bless the Lord. So they're just worshiping with us today, and we're so happy to have them. Passed by Sister um, Brent, Minister Brent Harris. And also, we should have welcomed back Sister Michelle Farkison who was in New York for a long, long time. Oh, there's Michelle. Bless you. Shout a hallelujah, Miss Sister Michelle. Okay, I was listening to see if she had a contracted an accent, but she didn't, right? And also, there will be an altar worker seminar at Bethel Tabernacle, Ocherios, on Saturday coming at 10 a.m. And this altar worker seminar will be conducted by none other than 
um, Pastor Devon Doss from All Nations Apostolic Tabernacle in New York. And um, if you're interested, um, will you please give your name to Sister Davine Walters, or you can give me your name. I think, um, you know, so we can see, you know, if arrangements need to be made in terms of transportation. So it's Saturday coming at 10 a.m. Well, praise God, everybody. We will definitely continue worship by giving. Praise God. So I'm asking the ushers to, to come. Okay. Yes, I, I know I'd missed someone. Sister Yvonne Buchanan was in the north of America for some months and she's back. God bless you, Sister Buchanan. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Praise God. So the ushers, will you please come? And as is customary, we'll march, follow the instructions of the ushers as they direct you. And remember, when we give to the Lord, we give cheerfully. We give abundantly, not grudgingly. And we remember that we are giving back to God a part of that which he has blessed us with. So we pay our tithes, which is 10% of our gross income. And we also give to missions for the work of missionary works. There are several missionaries abroad that we support. So we give to missions. And one thing with God, you can't outgive God. Not at all. You know, and God looks at the spirit with which we give. Praise God. So could we all stand and we'll ask... Um, Minister Herlan Graham to pray God's blessing on the earth. Let's all close our eyes. God, we are grateful for the privilege to be here this morning. We thank you for the open doors, the provision which you have made. We thank you for the jobs. We thank you, Lord, that the spirit in which we give cheerfully because your love cheerful giver. I pray, Lord, that you will bless those who have to give. Those who do not have, we are to the open doors. And they too can have to give into your kingdom. Let your will be done this morning. To give you all the glory and the praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Praise God. And while we march with our offering and worship God, Sister Davis and... He's able, he's able, he knows, he's able, I know my Lord is able to carry me through. Oh, he's able, he's able, I know he's able, I know my Lord is able to carry me through. Oh, yes. Heal the broken hearted, set the captive free. He caused the lame to walk again. He caused the blind to see. I know he's able, he's able. I know he's able. I know my Lord is able to carry me through. Oh, he's able, he's able. I know he's able, I know my Lord is able to carry me through. Oh, he has healed the broken hearted, set the captive free. He caused the lame to walk again, he caused the blind to see. I know he's able, he's able, I know he's able. I know my Lord is able to carry me through. Oh, he's able, he's able. I know he's able. I know my Lord is able to carry me through. Oh, he heals the broken hearted, set the captive free. He calls the lame to walk again. He calls the blind to see. I know he's able. 
He's able, I know. He's able, I know. My Lord is able to carry me through. Sweet Jesus, sweet Jesus, sweet Jesus. What a wonder you are. You are brighter than the morning star. Fairer, much fairer than the lilies that goes by the way. You are precious, more precious than gold. Oh, sweet Jesus, sweet Jesus, what a wonder you are. You are brighter than the morning, brighter than the morning star. You are fairer, much fairer, family that goes by the way. You are precious, more precious than gold. He never failed me yet. He never failed me yet. Jesus Christ never failed me yet. And everywhere I go, I want the world to know Jesus Christ has never failed me yet. Oh, he never failed me yet. He never failed me yet. Jesus Christ has never failed me yet. And everywhere I go, I want the world. Jesus Christ has never failed me yet. Hide me under your blood, Lord. Hide me under your oh, oh, oh. hide me under your blood. Hide me under your blood. Hide me under your blood, Lord. Hide me under your blood, and I shall be satisfied. Let me see your face, Lord. Let me see your face. Oh, oh, oh. Let me see your face, Lord. Let me see your face. Let me see your face, Lord. Let me see your face. Oh, I shall be satisfied. Oh, hide me under your. Hide me, Lord. Hide me, hide me, hide. Hide me, Lord! Hide me under your... Hide me, hide me! Hide me under your blood! Hide me under your blood, Lord! Hide me under your blood! And I shall be satisfied! Oh, let me see your face, Lord! Let me see your face! Oh, let me see your face! Let me see your face. Let me see your face. Let me see your face. And I shall be sad. Hide me, hide me, hide me. Hide me under your blood, Lord. Hide me under your. Hide me, Jesus. Hide me under your blood, Lord. Hide me under your blood. Hide me under your blood, Lord. Hide me under your blood, and I shall be satisfied. Oh, hide me under your blood. Oh, hide me under your blood. Hide me under your blood. Hide me under your blood, Lord. Hide me under your blood. And I shall be sad this One last time, let me see your face. Let me see your face, Lord. Let me see your face. Let me see your face, Lord. Let me see your face. 
Let me see your face, Lord. Let me see your face, and I shall be satisfied. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You may be seated. Hallelujah. Let me see your face, Lord, and I shall be satisfied. Praise God. Well, it's mission service, right? Praise God. And the theme for this little segment is committed to keeping the fire burning. So overall, our theme for this year is that the fire must not go out. And fire speaks to several things. Fire speaks to the Holy Ghost, being out poor, that can never go out. That will not go out. And fire also speaks to our zeal for the things of God, to do the work of the kingdom, to witness, to pray, to read the word, to invite persons to church. But we have to be committed to keep that fire blazing. Praise God. So, in our service today, and it will be a very short service, because we have a special service tonight, and we want everyone to come back. We want to primarily focus on two parables. We read one earlier, that was the parable of the householder, who, you heard the scripture, this man went out early in the morning, into the marketplace to hire people. So he went out at 6 a.m. And he found men idle. Then he went out again at 9 a.m. And he found men idle. He went out at 12, he found men idle. Went out at 3, found persons idle in the marketplace. And then he went out at 5 p.m. And he found men idle and sent them into his vineyard. So those who he found at five only worked for one hour. But those whom he sent after 6 a.m., he never had any agreement with them as to what they should work for. So he sent them, and they were so glad to work. And we'll kind of explain that to you, right? But then there was a time when it came for every man to be paid. And then, you know, place before us today, and then there's the parable of the talents that you all know very well that can be found in, in um, Matthew chapter 25. And, and you can find that verse 14 through to 30. We won't have time to read it, but there's something you have heard over and over. So this master called all his servants together and he gave one one talent, he gave one five, and he gave one two, and then he went away to a far country and took a long time to come back. And then he came back and called all his servants to find out what they did with the talent that they got. Right? I can see looks on your faces. You're saying talent, oh, some skill or some gift or so forth. But let's look at it. So place before us today for our careful consideration to see what immediate and permanent lesson can be learned from these two parables are the parables of the householder who went to hire laborers into his vineyard and the parable of the talents, right? So, in our opinion, persons think that when we speak of the talent, we're speaking of a coin, you know, but a talent is actually a weight. And therefore, it's obvious to us that the value of that talent, depending on what material, what metal it referred to. So you have talents of silver, talents of copper, or talent of gold. And you and I would know that gold is far more expensive in weight than copper or silver. It is said that a talent of um, silver was actually worth 15 years wages for a working man back then. 15 years wages, right? But what was significant about the talent, the parable of the talent, is that every servant was given a talent 
according to their ability. Right? The value of the talent was not the most important thing. What was the most important thing is that everyone received a talent from their master. Right? So everyone's gift was different and therefore everyone had what was required to participate in the activity of the kingdom. Because the parable does say the kingdom of heaven can be likened unto. So every single one was equipped with what it took to participate in the kingdom of God. Right? So there was something that all could do. And what's found is that the talent that was given, the weight of something that was given, right? It was different in all, but everyone received a talent. It is not a man's talent that matters. What matters is how he uses it. God never demands from a man abilities that he doesn't have, right? But he does demand from a man that he use those abilities that God has given to him to do something in the kingdom of God. What is significant, men are not equal in talent, but men can be equal in effort. The parable tells us that whatever talent we have, little or great, we must lay it at the service of the Lord. Don't say there is anything I can do. You may be shy. You may be slow to speak. But there is something you can do in the kingdom. All right, you don't have to worry because we won't have any preacher. We want us to focus on these two parables. Right? No. It's significant that where we are, that every one of us has to be active in the kingdom. Every one of us has to play our part. Each and every one of us can win one for the Lord Jesus Christ. We have been focusing, you know, on personal evangelism, right? Lifestyle evangelism or relationship evangelism. And there are persons in our sphere of influence, persons we talk to, we see every day, our family members, our co-workers, there are persons there. And we can just befriend them in a kind way and talk to them, let our lives speak to them so we can win them to the kingdom of God. And if the church of the Lord Jesus Christ is to grow, each one has to win one. So I just wanted to listen as the choir sings and we'll continue to delve into the two parables and see how it relates to us in the times in which we are. So each one can win one. Today a man is somewhere Proclaiming the good news Winning families to Jesus All around his neighborhood He tells them that God is able To make their house a home He wants to win his world for Christ but he can't do it alone. For each one can reach one. As we follow after Christ, we all can lead one. We can lead one. To the Savior, and together we can tell the world that.
that Jesus is the way. If we reach one, reach one, the message is unchanging. Going into all the world and share the love of Jesus far away and door to door. You see, just like somebody told you that Jesus loves you so, you must tell someone who will tell someone until the whole world knows each one can reach one as we follow after Christ we all can lead one we can lead one to the Savior and together we can tell the world that Jesus is the way if we each one reach one for the message it's unchanging going into all the world and share the love of Jesus far away and door to door you see just like somebody told you that Jesus loves you so you must tell someone who will tell someone until the whole world knows. Oh, for each one, each one can reach one. As we follow after Christ, we all can lead one. We can lead one to the Savior. And together we can tell the world that Jesus is the way. If we each one reach one, all oh, for each one can reach one as we follow after Christ we all can lead one we can all lead somebody to the Savior and together we can tell the world that Jesus is the way if we each one reach one oh for each one each one can reach one as we follow after christ we all can lead one we can all lead somebody to the Savior and forever we can tell the world that Jesus is the way if we each one reach one and forever we can tell the world that Jesus is the way if we each one reach one. Bless the Lord, each one.
can reach one. And so, no one is exempt. There's a part for the golden ages. There's golden ages prayer meeting every Wednesday. So each golden ager can invite another golden ager to come. That's how each one reach one. There are all who are middle-aged. We have our friends, our neighbors. We can reach one. There are those who are at school, students. You can reach one also. So each one can reach one. And if you recall both parables, he says, after a long time, the owner comes to make a reckoning with his slaves, with his servants. And to make a reckoning speaks to the fact that he is taking up the account with a view to settling it. Right? And he calls each and every one to give an account of what they did with their talent. So it tells us that there is reward when we work for the Lord. And it tells us too that there is punishment if we don't work for the Lord. It's as clear as that. So if you notice in the story, the man who had five talents and the one who had two, both of them came and gave their report. And both of them used the exact same words to actually state what they did. And surprisingly, it is said, if you count it in your Bible, they both use 16 words to describe what they did. And the one man who had one talent and did nothing at all with his talent, he used 43 words to describe what he did. And he blamed everyone else except himself. And just look at it. So for the for two persons, the golden ager, the middle-aged, those persons each were told, well done, thou good and faithful servant, enter into the joy of thy Lord. It could mean that they were invited to a feast that the master had at his return or to share in a job that was well done. However, the one man who did so very little, instead of reporting, he began to make what? Excuses. And noticed he blamed everyone else except himself. If you notice very carefully, the man with the one talent did not lose his talent at all. If he had lost his talent, at least the master could understand. But the thing that happened was he simply did nothing with it. The master said unto him, even if you had lent it to the bankers, I would have gotten something in return. But you hid my talent in the ground. It would have been better you know, had he not done anything, right, than to make those excuses. I'm not talking to him, of work, you know. It would have been better had he taken the talent and given it to the bankers and something would have been done with it. And, and it's a temptation for those who think they have little talent to say, I have so small a talent that I can do so little with it, it's not worth trying. When it comes to the kingdom of heaven, every single one of us have to pull our weight. There's something we have to do. So his condemnation is not that he had only one talent, but he wasn't even prepared to risk using the talent to build his master's kingdom. And surprisingly, when the reward was being offered, his master took his one talent and gave it to the one who had five. And they said that it's a universal truth in life. It tells us that those who are very little, 
the very little they have will be taken from them if they do nothing with it and given to another who has many. You know, the meaning is if a man has a talent and exercises it, he will progressively be able to give more to do. So God sees that you're faithful with the little talent you have. Maybe it's just handing out a track. Maybe just like Sister Cordell who goes to institutions, you know, St. George's colleges and other places and just hand out a track in the morning. Just maybe God might use her to speak to someone at the parliament building and it can bring great success to the kingdom of God. I'm just saying that these two parables have lessons in it for us to learn. And the lesson is whatever talent God has given to us, we have to be using it in the service of God for fellow men. And this year, more than any other year, as we draw closer to the coming of the Lord, all of us have to be involved in the process of personal evangelism. You and I cannot allow that fire to go out. Before the choir comes to sing again, we said we're dealing with two parables. So, in the parable of the laborers that we read in our scripture reading this morning, the men who are standing in the marketplace, they are not street corner idlers and just lazing around, wasting time. The marketplace was equivalent of a labor exchange. A man came there first thing in the morning carrying his tools and waited upon someone to hire him. The men stood in the marketplace and they were waiting for work. And the fact that some stood until 5 o'clock in the evening is proof of how desperately they wanted to work. So these men were hired laborers. They were the lowest class of workers. And life for them was always desperately precarious. Slaves and servants were regarded as being at least to some extent attached to a family. At least they would be sure of getting a meal and a place to sleep. However, for these persons who were waiting in the marketplace, their family depended on what they did. Right? They were not attached to any group. They were entirely at the mercy of chance employment. And they are always living, living on the semi-starvation line. Because if they went back home and got no job for that particular day, chances are that their families would not eat. So, them being in the marketplace is significant. And the fact is that they were so happy to get a job that they did not bargain with the householder as to what their salaries would be. At least getting something is better than having nothing at all. And he sent them into his vineyard. Right? And they all gladly went into the vineyard. We're not concerned about their salary. And this is the attitude that you and I must have. If we are standing in the marketplace, right? God, the householder, is calling us to his vineyard. And we don't have to go far. The persons are all around us. Right? And listen to me. If you and I don't work, chances are that those persons around us will die of starvation. They will die and go to a Christless eternity when we were there and our master wanted to hire us. Jesus said, my meat is in the will of him that called me to finish his work. He started a great work by transforming sinful men, right, into members of his body. And he wants us to finish that work. So the saints of God can't lie idly by and watch men die in their sins and go to a crisis eternity. He's calling men into his vineyard.
In the journey of life, there are winding roads, mountains high and valleys low. Though the road ahead may be unknown, I'm still focused on the price that's worth pressing for. I will be what you called me to be. I say yes, Lord, I agree. My desire passionately is to be what you called me to be, and that's what I'll be. All road signs read destiny. I'll follow wherever you lead. Nothing can hinder me for the price is all I see. All I see, I will be what you call me to be. And say yes, I say yes. Lord, I agree, my desire passionately is to be what you called me to be and that's what I'll be I will be what you called me to be I say yes Lord That's what I'll be. I'll be. I will be what you call me to be. I'll say yes.
I agree, I agree, I agree, Lord. Wherever you lead me, Lord, I'll go. Just 
to be. That's what I just to be. Jesus. Jesus. I'll be Lord. Hallelujah. That's Hallelujah. I'll be, I'll be, I'll be, I'll be, I'll be. I'll be your witness, Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, that's what I'll be. That's what I'll be. stand everybody just lift our hands and just worship God I don't know who God is speaking to here today oh beautiful presence of the Lord hallelujah 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 my 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 thank you Lord thank you Lord let's just lift our hands and just worship the Lord Hallelujah. Let's close our eyes. Oh, let's just say something wonderful to Jesus. Oh, but most important, you must say yes. Oh, a God who keeps on calling, knocking at our heart's door. Oh, he wants us to see the lost through his eyes. 
a God who was moved with compassion. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise God, praise God. You, you may be seated. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Let's lift our hands one more time. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. It's the beautiful presence of the Lord. Thank you, Lord. And for sure, if we work for God, we know that there will be a time of reckoning, a time of reward. And it gives us great comfort to know that it does matter when we have entered the kingdom of God, whether late or soon, whether we entered with the vigor of youth on our side, or whether we entered with the strength of midday, or whether we entered when the shadows were lengthening, we're all equally dear to God. Doesn't matter when a man comes into the kingdom, God is always calling him to do a work in the kingdom. And we're all equally dear to God. And the story as told in Matthew chapter 25 speaks of a God who was very compassionate. It shows such a tenderness with God. There is nothing more tragic in this world than a man who is unemployed, a man whose talents are rusting in idleness because there's just nothing for him to do. In fact, one writer, Hugh Martin, he reminds us that a great teacher used to say that the saddest words in all of Shakespeare's plays are these words, Otello's occupation's gone. So Otello had nothing to do, his occupation was gone. And in the marketplace that we have been placed, you know, persons are standing waiting to be hired. And in compassion, the master then puts them to work because he cannot bear to see persons in his vineyard being idle. And if we speak of justice, then the man who worked the fewest hours should have been paid less. He should have received the least. But the master well know that his salary, you know, you know, a penny, you know, was no great wage to that man. So he well knew that that man, if he went home with only one hour's pay, then it would not suffice for his family. His children would be hungry. His wife would be hungry. You know, so the master in great compassion, he paid all of them. He gave the man the wage as if the man had worked for 12 hours. So it speaks of the generosity of God. So it doesn't matter when we come in the kingdom, if you just got saved or you're saved 50 years ago, God is a God who knows how to reward and God will give us a reward according to the work that we have done. God does not look maybe on the amount of years of service. So long as what we have done for God, we gave it our all. Our intentions were right. Our attitudes were right. And we gave all to the service of God. And so, I can well imagine on that great day of reward, what will happen. 
the songwriter tried to encapsulate what would happen. So he said, he penned the song, when redeemed at his side, I stand over in the promised land with the mighty blood washed strong. I will sing redemption song crying worthy, worthy is the lamb when redeemed at his side. I stand. But brothers and sisters, we are not going to stand alone. But the many who we have reached, though we came into the kingdom late, they are going to be standing there too with hearts filled with gratitude. Thank God that you told me about Jesus. So those who work and those who came to know Jesus because of our efforts, they are going to stand there too, glorifying and worshiping God. I wish we could capture the moment. Capture the moment in our minds. And understand that Jesus Christ has no other plans to reach this world Except, as the song said, each one reach one. And the Lord is depending on us. So we have to keep ablaze that fire of evangelism, that fire of personal evangelism, that fire of concern for the lost. We have to keep it ablaze. I know sometimes our lives can get very busy and we are bogged down trying to make ends meet but just think of what would happen if there is someone who God has placed in our path for us to win to the kingdom and because we were too busy looking about our own interests rather than busy looking about the interests of the kingdom of God that person dies and goes to a crisis eternity. I wonder what they will say. Or what will we say on that great day when they stand and said, Brother Moses passed me every day. He knew I was astray. But never once mentioned Jesus to me. It's a great work for us to do. Many souls we pass every day that needs to be saved. And God is depending on us. The fire of personal evangelism must keep burning. And for sure, for sure, we will receive a great reward for what? we have done. You may never know or the people you have reached but we know he knows for a record he does keep. Praise God. And so we've heard about the talents that none of us is without, is without excuse. We know that the harvest is ripe and that there's more than ever before there's a need for personal evangelism. And for that to happen, we have to give ourselves. Amen? We give ourselves for your call. We dedicate our lives to reach the lost. And though we don't know all whose lives we've touched with love. We consecrate, we sanctify, 
purging ourselves. We purify that no light be seen but the one that beams from me. You're going to keep on working. Oh, don't stop preaching. Keep on believing. For we may never know all the people we have touched. For we may never know all the lives that we have reached. But we know, you know, for a record you do keep. And when the end does finally begin, we will receive a great reward for what we've done. For we may never know all the people we have touched. For we may never know all the lives that we have reached. But we know, you know, for a record you to keep. And when the end has finally begun, we will receive a great reward for what we've done. We'll receive a great reward for what we've done. We'll receive a great reward for what we've done. For we may never know all the people we have touched. For we may never know all of the lives that we have reached. But we know, you know, for our record, you. Finally, begin. we will receive a great reward. Hallelujah, we will receive a great reward for what we've done. We will receive a great for what we've done. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Could we stand and lift our hands, everybody? Oh, and let's us for a 30 seconds just meditate on the words we heard. We will receive a great reward for what you have done. Oh, hallelujah. And you won't be the one rewarding yourself. Oh, what a righteous judge who's able to judge motives. Oh, he will be the one rewarding us. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Oh, so even at this moment, he's calling workers and sending them into his vineyard. Hallelujah, 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 praise God. And in, in the fading moments of this service, just maybe there is someone here who God has given you talents. Hallelujah. But just maybe based on how you've lived your life, you haven't totally surrendered your life to God. I want to give you an opportunity to come to this altar where we can pray with you, where you can repent of sins, where you can make a commitment to God. Oh, so God can 
send you out into his vineyard. He can hire you into his kingdom. Is there someone like that here today in the fading moments? Your commitment doesn't have to take 20 minutes, just 10 minutes from a heart that truly sees and, and God is calling and you want to respond to that call. Anyone here? Anyone here? Just a commitment. Just a heart that wants to say yes, Lord, yes to your will and to your way. Just maybe for some time he has been calling you and you have found every excuse in the book like that servant with the one talent. But here you are with another opportunity where God is calling you. Is there someone here like that today in the fading moments of this service? Just want to talk it over with God. Let's make a new commitment. Hallelujah. If not, could I just one more time just ask the saints to just, just join us in the altar while we make a commitment to keep the fire ablaze. So five, ten minutes just to make a new commitment to God. Oh, this year is a pivotal year. We're one more year closer to the coming of the Lord. Hallelujah. Just maybe, just maybe, you're active in the kingdom, but just maybe you have said to yourself, it's time for me to retire now. But God is calling you back. It's something you can do. Just a new commitment. Just give myself to God. Do the will of God. Anyone else wants to come? Just a new commitment. Just a new commitment. I will give you all. Hallelujah. Help me, Calvary's cross. And be willing to say yes. Oh, it epitomizes God's love for us. I will give you all. I will give you all. I will give you all. All my talents. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. And if my sacrifice is less than giving you my very best, best. Help, help me remember Calvary's cross and be willing to say yes. I will give you all one more time. I will give you all. I will give you all. If all is what you ask of me, I will not withhold. And if my sacrifice is less than giving you my very best, help me remember Calvary's cross and be willing to say yes. I will give you all.
of this service, I want everyone to, to find a place of prayer. Maybe if you're seated, seated. Maybe if you want to kneel, just find a place of prayer. And let's make a new commitment to God. A new commitment to God. A commitment. A commitment to work in the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. A new commitment. Let's, let's find a place to pray. Let's talk to God about us. That he'll open our eyes so that we can see that the fields are white, all ready to harvest. But the laborers are few. While men stand idle, in the marketplace. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, soon will be season of reaping be o'er. Oh God, oh God, oh God, help me, oh God, not to leave behind an unfinished task. Oh, God, I don't want to stand before you empty-handed at your judgment bar when rewards are being offered. I don't want to stand empty-handed. Oh, you have run the race. You have kept the faith. These words I long, I want to hear my Savior say. And when my life on earth is past, there is just one thing, dear Lord, I ask, don't let me leave behind an unfinished task. I might not be able to, to achieve my goals and my ambitions, my aspirations, in terms of a job, in terms of material possession. But, oh, God, don't let me leave behind an unfinished task. Oh, God, open my eyes, oh, God, to the condition of our nation. Something within me should be pricking me, pushing me. Oh, telling me I have to redeem the time. For the days are evil. Oh God, oh God, oh God. Oh, let's cry out to God. You will know yourselves better than anyone else. Oh, let's talk to God. Lord, help me make a new commitment and begin a fresh start. What I did for the kingdom of God last year won't suffice. I've got to do more. I've got to make a new commitment. Oh, God, for the kingdom, for the kingdom, for the kingdom. Oh, the kingdom of God is likened unto ten virgins. The kingdom of God is likened unto the householder who went out into the marketplace early in the morning. Oh, the kingdom business requires haste. Lord, help us. Help us, Lord. Help us. Help us, Jesus. Oh, God, you're depending on us. You're depending on us, Jesus. Oh, to stand in the gap. To make up the hedge, oh God, so you can withhold your judgment upon the land. 
Oh God, can you find such a one here today? Can you find a man here today who will impact his community? Can you find a man here today who will impact his workplace for Jesus? Oh God, can you find a student here who will impact his entire classroom, his entire school? Oh God, will impact the university? Oh God, can you find such a man? Oh, committed to keeping the fire ablaze. Oh God. Oh God. say yes, Lord. I'll say yes. I'll say yes. I'll say yes. Lord, whatever you're doing in this season, please don't do it without me. Don't do it without me, Lord, whatever you're doing in this season, please don't do it without me, don't do it without me. Lord, if 
Stand, everybody. Hallelujah. There are persons who are still praying. We'll continue to pray, but we'll let you go though a bit early so you can all come again tonight. Let's bow our heads. Lord Jesus, we thank you for this day. We thank you for being with us, Jesus. Of a truth, Lord, we did attempt to worship you with all our hearts, with all our soul, and with all our strength. And we trust, Almighty God, that you were pleased with our worship. Lord God, we know there has never been a day like this. And there will never be another day like this. Where you have ministered to us in your own way. I pray, O oh God, that your words, Lord, that you spoke through Psalms, through scripture reading, did get to its target, O oh God. And your people heard clearly what it is that you want us to do. For Lord God, the scriptures that we read did show that those who are working in the kingdom and are successful in doing what you have asked them to do, more responsibility and more work is thrust upon them. So I pray, oh God, that you'll strengthen your people today and help us to see souls and the world around us through the eyes of Jesus Christ. And that, oh God, at all times we may be moved with compassion. Oh, God, and willing to share of our gospel and our experiences with others. We thank you for your people, oh God, who came out, all those who worshipped, all those who gave. And as we're about now, Lord, to separate from each other, we pray, Almighty God, that you'll go with us, that you'll guide us home safely. And, oh God, he'll bring us back into your house. And, oh God, we lift our hands to tell you thanks and to worship you. For we hear a familiar sound, O oh God. Someone who's broken before you. 
reaching out, oh God. And we know even now, you're going to send your Holy Spirit, oh God, and baptize this one young lady. We thank you, God, for hearing our prayers. We thank you for answering, oh God. We're not waiting until she begins to speak in other tongues, but we're rejoicing even now. And we're thanking you even now, God, for the word that you're going to do. We say thanks in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Oh, hallelujah.